Right, so this is more maths 1M, and I'm going to talk about at least a few things to do with vectors and planes and that sort of thing. Okay. So I don't have time to do the, the full story, because the full story is like two hours long. Um, and so I'm not going to do that because um, there's another revision seminar this afternoon. Um, I, I would keep going, um, but I won't. So I'm just going to talk about a few things to do with vectors um, in the next half an hour um, that cover some of the things I've missed before. So first I just need to remind you that mathematicians are a bit sloppy sometimes when they talk about vectors. Sometimes when they say a vector what they mean is a point and sometimes when they say a vector what they mean is, a, um, is an arrow. Um, in Maths 1M, the lecturer almost always means an arrow when they say vector. But when you write vectors down in a calculation, sometimes it's easier to think of one of them as a point and one of them as a vector. Because vectors can have components or coordinates in the same way that points can. So, uh, just to point out that if this is the point P and this is the point Q, and the arrow between them is called PQ and we have this statement that P plus PQ comes out to Q. Now, I'm pretty sure that will be okay. Some lecturers prefer you to declare an origin somewhere in space, maybe the origin is here, and have OP plus PQ is OQ. But it doesn't really matter you can think of it, this is just, this statement here is specifically just about the lists of coordinates of those points and vectors. So the coordinates of the point P and the coordinates of the vector PQ add together to produce the coordinates of Q. And you're probably more familiar with this as PQ is end minus beginning, Q minus P. When I write that statement, I'm talking about the coordinates slash components of these things. And this pretty much is one of the most fundamental things about understanding vectors and how to use them in proofs um, that you can understand. That to get from one point to another, you can add the coordinates of a point to the coordinates of the vector and you will produce the coordinates of the new point. Okay, that's the first thing I want to say. So if you want to talk about um, a proof of uh, a statement using vectors, uh, then you need to know, uh, so a statement about geometry, something about sort of rhombuses or triangles or something, you need to turn things that you would normally say about points and triangles and rhombuses and whatever, into things that you could say about vectors. And so we need to know what sort of operations we can do upon vectors um, to produce answers that will tell us about um, geometrical things. And so we need to know what we can do to them. Things to do to vectors. Well. The first thing you can do to the vector is find its length. I'm just going to go back a bit and have a look up in your notes to just see what symbol you use for the length of a vector. Double line, okay. So the length of a vector, the length of V, is literally the length as drawn on the page or drawn in space. And if your vector is made out of components, um, you can use Pythagoras' theorem to do it. So in 2D, you'll get the two coordinates and you'll square them and add them and then square root them. Uh, but in 3D, It'll be the same, but there'll be three coordinates there. Okay, so that's the length of a vector. 
So when you're talking geometry, you can, you can say, oh, I need this length, and you can just represent it like that. And you don't just need to know what you can do, you need to know um, what happens to length uh, when you do calculations on the vector v. So um, just some rules. The length of k times v is the same as the absolute value of k times the length of v. Okay, so if you've got 2v, the length of that would be twice the length of v. And minus v will be the same length as v because the absolute value of minus 1 is 1. And just to point out, I will put that in there specifically, the length of minus v is the same as the length of v. But what the length does not do is expand out over plus. Okay, if you have u plus v and you do the length, you can't just add the two lengths together separately. That is not how vectors work. Okay, so you cannot expand out like this. Right, it just, no, do not try. It doesn't work. Okay, you cannot expand length out over plus. I'm just going to foreshadow something else that's worth pointing out that the length of v is the same at squared is the same as v dot v when we get up to the dot product in a minute. Really useful to know. So length is something that we can do. Information that you can tell about two vectors um, is that we can create their dot product. So the dot product of two vectors, um, u dot v will be, doesn't matter how many coordinates they have, u1 v1 plus u2 v2. So basically you just do the matching coordinates and add them up and if there's three vectors, if there's three coordinates, you'll just do the third one as well. Okay, so the dot product is just something that you can do. Um, you take vectors and you dot them and it produces a number. Um, and dot products were invented um, about 20 years before uh, Alice in Wonderland was written um, and they were invented because of complex numbers. It's totally cool um, that complex numbers um, are the reason why dot products exist. Okay, so that's the dot product, and the dot product um, is related to the angle between vectors. And so we have some rules and some facts that are, that are true. So some rules. Um, dot product expands out over plus, um, and you can bring um, constants out. So you know that u plus v dot w is u dot w plus v dot w. So you can expand brackets exactly as you would normally would expect with, um, with products. And you also know that, that um, u dot like kv is the same as k times u dot v. You can bring constants out the front if you want to as well. So that's the rules of how dot products behave. And it will, I mean, if you have u plus v dot like w plus z, um, it'll all expand out exactly the way you expect um, with ordinary um, vectors. Um, some connections. Um, we already did this one. U dot U is the length of U squared. And if you know anything about matrices, if you write U as a column vector, then U transpose U, V. So U dot V is u transpose times v as column matrices. So v is a column matrix. You make u into a row matrix by transposing it and you multiply them with matrix multiplication, it will produce a dot product. Not that that's necessary now, but I mention it as often as I can because it does come in handy in Maths 1B. So a little while until then, but you know, it's not, can't hurt to mention it now. Um, and then there's some other just useful facts 
u dot v divided by the length of u times the length of v happens to be equal to cos theta where theta is the angle between the vectors. So that's a fact about the dot product. Other useful facts about the dot product um, is that uh, if u dot v equals zero, then u and v are orthogonal or perpendicular. They're the same meaning. Um, did your lecturer use the word orthogonal in this course? Yeah. Technically, the word perpendicular has an indication, uh, has an assumption that the two objects meet, um, which they can if you put the vectors at the same spot. Um, and also, something really useful to know um, is that if v is a unit vector, then u dot v is the length of the projection of u onto v. So, if v is a unit vector, meaning that the length of v is 1, then u dot v is the length of the projection of u onto v. So, this is a picture. Here's a unit vector, it's length 1. Uh, and you've got another vector that you're projecting down onto it. Then this projection vector here, that purple vector there, the length is u dot v, which is a really cool fact, actually. So if you project onto a unit vector, then the length of the vector you produce is u dot v. Awesome. Which is foreshadowing something I'm about to say. So that's the dot product. So, so far we have some useful geometrical things. The length of a vector is the length of its actual arrow that's drawn on the page. The dot product of a vector helps you calculate the angle between two vectors. Um, and that's the really useful thing for geometry. And other things to do to vectors. is the projection. So the projection of one vector onto another um, is what you get when you get use the second vector as a base um, and project the other and, and do a right angle triangle using the, the other vector as a hypotenuse. So um, if I have just random vectors like this, maybe this is u and this is v, then we use this vector as a base, this vector as a hypotenuse, and we will create that, and this purple vector will be the projection of u onto v. But of course, v projected onto u will be a different vector entirely because the vector of v projected onto u will be in the direction of u. And there's a formula for it, and it technically uses the fact that if you have a unit vector, then the um, length of the dot product, the dot product is the same as the length of the projection. So this is the formula here. So the, the formula for the projection of u onto v projection of u onto v is, <clears throat> let me see if I can remember it. I can only remember it in the mass 1b way, so I'm just going to do that first and then simplify it. First you need to make a unit vector out of v by dividing it by its length. And then you know that the length of the um, projection vector will be u dot that. And then you know that you want that amount of the unit vector. Okay. I 
Okay, so that's u dot v on the length of v squared times v. That is the projection of u onto v. I'm going to do an example so that that makes sense. The projection of 1 naught 3 onto minus 2, minus 1, 6. So I'm projecting this one onto that one. So this is my um, V in that particular context. I don't really like to label them by letters. So the second one is the one that I need to put on the bottom. Um, so if you think, if that helps you, projecting onto V means that V is on the bottom because you're going onto it. And that can help you remember which way around to put the vectors in your formula. Okay, so I'm going to need the length of v and I'm going to need to get u dot v. So u dot v, I'm going to need the length of v squared. u dot v is, in fact, I will label them u and v so it's easier to tell. No, I won't. 1 naught 3 dot minus 2 minus 1 6 is, so minus 2 plus 0 plus 18, which is 16. That's the dot product. The length of the V is minus 2 squared. It's minus 2 squared, which is 4, 1 squared, which is 1, and 6 squared, which is 36, which would be 41. Just a second. So what I did there is I squared all three of them and added them up. Uh, and then the projection will be u dot v divided by the length of v times, not uh, length of v squared, times v. So whatever that vector is, not happy, it's a bad, bad vector, but you know, that's what we're going to do. So minus 32 on 41 minus 16 on 41 and whatever 6 times 16 is 60 96 ta-da that's the projection and that's how to do projections if I projected minus 2 minus 1 6 onto 1 0 3 on the other hand I'd still use the dot product but I'd be using the length of 1 0 3 here and 1 0 3 in this spot And finally, uh, the last thing that we can do to vectors um, is do the cross product, which is in 3D only. So the cross product um, is a new vector, uh, and um, did your lecturer define it via a determinant? Before I do that, sorry. Just important to note that the other vector in that diagram is the component of u orthogonal to v. So when I draw this picture again, this purple one is the projection, whereas this pink one is the component of u orthogonal to v. So let's just look at the grammar of that sentence. It's the component of u, which means that I, I can make u out of it and another piece. So I go the purple bit plus the pink bit is entire, is definitely u. And the component of u, it's the part of u that is orthogonal to v. So the purple bit is the part of u that is in, that is in the same direction as v. 
and the pink bit is the part of you that is orthogonal to V. And if you want to find that component that is orthogonal to V, first you find the projection and then you take it off. So, so the component of U orthogonal to V is U minus the projection of U onto V. Okay, so we get this pink bit is U minus the purple bit because purple plus pink equals U, so therefore if we subtract it comes out the other way. So this is the purple vector. This is my um, black vector and this is the pink vector. Right, needed to say that so that it was done, otherwise I'd go another three years without fixing it, I'm sure. So back to the cross product. The cross product is a way of multiplying vectors to produce a vector. It only works in 3D and it was invented at the same time as the dot product, actually um, by, by William, well, <coughs> it was invented by some other people, but William Rowan Hamilton had the forerunner ideas when he was working on quaternions. Um, in the 1640s. <coughs> Sorry, 1840s. Um, about 20 years before, before Alice in Wonderland was published. So, um, right. And the cross product, and what I was looking up was how to do the cross product. is defined like this. Um, and it's defined using the determinants of little matrices. Some people like to define it like this. If you have a U cross V, you can stick your U and V in as rows. And your V in as a row. And if you know how to do the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, you can stick I, which is the unit vector in the, in the x direction, J, which is the unit vector in the, in the y direction, and K, which is the unit vector in the z direction, and multiply out this determinant, and then collect your, your, um, x, your coefficients together, and that will be the cross product. All right, I will go a little longer than um, I was planning to just to make sure I finish this all properly. Um, and that is a way of calculating the cross product. Um, you can also calculate it by rewriting um, your vector as ijk and multiplying everything out, um, if that is something that you prefer doing. So um, just as an example, oh, I'll do an example of calculating it in a second, but I'm just gonna put some facts down So just some facts that are useful to know. U cross V is the same as minus V cross U. If you switch the order, then, you, then the, the answer is minus what it was before. And that's to do with the fact that if you switch two rows in a matrix, the determinant gets minus. And you also know um, that U cross V as a vector is perpendicular to both U and V. That's useful. And the direction is done with the right hand rule. Uh, there are many versions of the right hand rule. My favorite one is this one. Um, that's U, that's V and then U cross V points out of your palm. So, let me just zoom out a bit. So, that's the first vector, that's the second vector, and U cross V points out of your palm. So here's U cross V there, like that. I find this easier than that version because it hurts less to just do that. And your palm always points that way, so there's no need to put your fingers in this direction. Some people put that U and that V 
and this is u cross v, and that works just as well. Um, and still others um, say that if your u is here and your v is in this direction, so you curl your fingers um, in the way, sweep from u to v, your thumb will point in the direction of the cross product. So um, there are many of them. Um, I will put a link to um, my blog post, which is about the various different versions, but my favorite is this one. That's u, that's v, and it points out of your palm. Which means if you do that classic question where you've got like a, a hands of a clock, um, then you know whichever way around the hands are will point either into the clock or out of the clock. So that's the right hand rule. Um, you also know that u cross u for anything is always the zero vector. Any vector crossed with itself is a zero vector. It's just useful facts to know. Um, and the other thing you know about the cross product is the length of the cross product is the length of u times the length of v times sine theta, where theta is the angle between them. And finally, if you create a parallelogram from your vectors like this, then this area is the length of the cross product. And I guess finally the, the, the cross product does actually expand out over brackets the same as um, the other things do. So um, u plus v cross u w is u cross w plus v cross w. So it expands out over expands out over plus the way you would expect multiplication to, and a u cross v is a u cross v. So you can bring constants out as well. Just useful things to know. Cool. It does interact with the dot product as well, but I, I just can't be bothered at this time. So um, that is the cross product. Knowing all of those things allows us to do a lot of stuff. Okay, um, We can do a lot of stuff with vectors um, by um, knowing that there's some algebra that goes with it. So we can turn a geometrical problem into an algebraic problem, uh, and we can use these properties to prove um, things our ge geometrical using things algebraic, which is one of the big ideas in maths. So, ah, oh, there was one other fact that I forgot to mention. which I'll just, not sure where to put it, so I'm just going to put it here before we get to the cross product if you don't mind. You can put it wherever you want to put it in your notes. But Parallelism, so things being parallel, um, Vectors are parallel when um, they are scalar multiples of each other. Non-zero scalar multiples. So for example, 3V is parallel to V. Um, and one zero five is parallel to a fifth zero one because this one is a fifth of that one. So as long as they're scalar multiples of each other, they will be parallel. Um, and just to point it out, you know, u 
to V means U equals KV for some K, basically. That's how you would use it in a proof. Okay, so geometry proofs uh, require you to look at a structure of points and lines uh, and attempt to use that structure to, um, to create vectors that allow you to make a proof. So, easiest way is to do an example. Prove that prove that the diagonals of a kite meet at right angles and I'm going to explicitly specify using vectors. Okay, so one can prove that the diagonals of a kite meet at right angles using similar triangles and Pythagoras' theorem, um, but we are going to use vectors because as you were explicitly told by your lecturer, that's what he expects you to do. So you need to know about the properties of a kite um, and so a kite has um, map adjacent sides equal. Like that, that's what a kite looks like. And we can label all the corners of my kite and it is traditional to label the um, corners of a quadrilateral in cyclic order in anti-clockwise direction. Like that. And we'll mark in the diagonals and we want to show uh, that they meet at right angles. So we want to show that the vector BD is perpendicular to the vector CAC. This one and this one are perpendicular. This means what we want to show is that their dot product is zero. Okay? It's all bananas. I wonder if I can uh, figure that out. So that's what I want to show because that's what it means in terms of vectors for things to be perpendicular. Okay, so my thought is that if I could sub in something for BD and sub in something for AC so that when I expand it all out, um, it all comes to zero, um, then I'll have done my job. So um, my idea is that maybe what I should do is I should write BD as a vector in terms of BA and AD. So let's see, BD would be BA plus AD. So the vector from here to here is the same as the vector from here to here plus the vector from here to here. So this is the same as that plus that. Okay, and AD, AC would be the same as AD plus DC because AC is the same as AD plus DC. Don't know if this is going to help, but it can't hurt. And one of the other reasons it can't hurt is because I do know that this vector is the same length as that vector. So I'm going to see what I get when I, when I try and expand it out. So BD dot AC is BA plus AD, because that's what BD is. dot AD plus DC. And I can expand out brackets with dot products, so I get BA dot AD. Hmm. It's not as helpful as I would have liked. And, sorry, that was BA dot AD, BA dot DC. 
still not helpful. Hmm. AD dot AD and AD dot DC. That's not helpful. So what have I got? I've got BA dot AD. Hmm. Well, that would be the angle between them, I suppose. I could use that. BA dot DC. Yeah, that's not helpful. And then what was the other one? AD dot AD. Well, that's the square of the length of AD. And AD dot DC. AD dot DC. It's that there. Mm, this is what happens when you make one up and you're not sure if it's actually possible to prove it using vectors at all. Hmm. I do have some other ideas, but I'm not sure if I want to go there. See why everyone hates these proofs so much. I do know at least that AD dot AD is the length of AD squared. Which is the same as the length of AB or BA. So that AD dot AD is the length of AD squared, which is technically the same as the length of BA, right? Because it's a kite. The AD, AD dot AD became length of AD squared, became the length of BA squared because it's a kite, became BA, BA. I guess they've all got a BA. AD, DC, and BA. AD, DC, and BA. Oh, that's interesting. I like it. Let's see what ha that happens. BA, A dot, AD plus DC. Okay, so let's watch this. AD and DC is this bit here. BA and AD and DC is the same as BC. So this bit here, BA and AD and DC is the same as BC, according to my diagram. Did that help? BA times BC plus AD times DC. Uh, that's a dot product, by the way. Uh, yeah. What does it even mean? So, damn, this is supposed to come to zero, isn't it? And I have no idea why. So it's those two and those two. So this would be the length of BA and the length of BC times cos of the angle between those two. This would be the length of AD and the length of DC times cos of the angle between those two. 
which would seem to be saying that there'd be two lots of cos of the angle between them. Oh, I think I've done something wrong. I did it yesterday and now I've done it again. Curses! Really should have picked one that I actually knew. I know that this is true, um, but I should have picked one that I knew how it worked. Ah. Does someone have a suggestion? Something to do? To make this work? Trying to make everything cancel out to zero. The only other way I can think to do it is to try a different representation of those vectors. Um, but I don't like it because I needed to try and find the length. I've used the fact that things are the same length. The only thing I haven't used is the fact that CB is the same length as CD. I've used the fact that AB is the same length as AD, but I haven't used the fact that CD is the same length as CB. Um, so these two vectors here are the same length. And I know that those two vectors there are the same length. And I haven't lost any minuses along the way. Everything's been plus everywhere, hasn't it? So the angle between these two That angle, that angle. Ah, uh, okay. And the reason this is coming out to zero is because one of those dots, the, the angles come out. Uh, no, can't do it yet. I'll have to let that percolate for a bit while I ponder something else. Give me a minute to come back to it. This is what happens in an exam. You leave it um, and um, you see if it comes back to, to you better. Hmm. See, I could totally use the cos rule, but I'm not allowed to use any of those things. I have to use vectors. Well, if this was as far as you got, you could do it. I'm sorry. Um, I did not plan to talk about... Um, geometry things until the last minute so I couldn't prepare something uh, but um, I can do a different proof that will totally come out um, if you um, suffer me to do another one. One of the ones in the um, one of the ones in the um, assignments. Let's see if I can remember what it is. Prove that when you connect the midpoints of the sides of a quadrilateral, you get a parallelogram. So we're going to have a general quadrilateral of no particular shape. And we're going to have the midpoints. And we're going to connect them up. And that's supposed to be a parallelogram. That's my proof. So normally in an exam we would come with a diagram. So um, my hope is that using vectors I can prove that these things are true. To be a parallelogram I need the vector NM to be the same as the vector PQ. And I need the vector... Um, QM to be the same as the vector Q PN. That's what I need in order to be a parallelogram. It's good to know what your goal is. And so all I need to do is figure out what those vectors are in terms of other stuff um, and hope that they come out to be the same. So let's see. M is the midpoint of A and B, um, which means that its coordinates are the average of A and B. That's how you do midpoints. Um, but you can also do it as vectors. 
you can say that m will be a plus a half of the vector from a to b. So that's the vector from a to b. We go halfway from a to b. Um, and so we get that's what m is. That would be one way of dealing with it. But I decide that I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to say that um, mn, because that's what we wanted to talk about in the first place, mn is a vector from m to n, and it is mb plus bc. Bn, sorry. Which also happens to be half of AB because that's what MB is. It's halfway because it's a midpoint plus half of CBC. That's MN. But QP is similarly QD plus DP, which is a half of AD and a half of DC. So this distance here, this vector is a half of that vector because Q is the midpoint. This vector is a half of that vector. Cool, but just a second. AD plus DC is this vector here, which is the same as AB plus BC. Because AD plus DC is AC, and AB plus BC is also AC. And so this is the same as MN. Cool, so QP is the same as MN. Um, so those opposite two sides are parallel and they are the same length. And we could do a similar reasoning along the other side um, to show that Pn is the same as Nm, Qm. So Pn is Pc plus Cb, which is a half of Dc plus a half of, sorry, that's Cn. PC plus CN, it's a half of DC and a half of CB, which is a half of DC plus CB. But DC plus CB is the same as DA plus BA. I expand out the half, and a half of DA is. Um, half of DA would be QA and a half of BA sorry just a second a half of DA crap AB not BA DA and AB a half of Q, DA would be QA a half of AB would be AM and QA plus AM is QM and so therefore what we have is a parallel is a quadrilateral whose the opposite edges are parallel um, and, and equal and therefore it's a parallelogram. So opposite edges of QMNP are parallel and equal. So therefore QMNP is a parallelogram. Yes. That one I can do. Um, my hope is that the ones in your in your um, the one that might appear in your exam um, will be amenable to just coming up with something like what we just did then. But do notice that a key point of this proof was noticing that at some point there is a vector here which can be written in a different way. This vector here, um, which was AC, this sum of vectors could be written in as this one here. So 
Um, there are two ways to get to the same, to, two ways to make the journey from one point to another, and that is usually the crux on which these proofs um, work. I will think about the kite um, and hopefully at least fill in the rest of the proof for the handout version. Now I was going to talk about planes, but you know I'm very tired, um, and there is actually a whole seminar on. Uh, planes and stuff that's already there, so I could leave it at that. Um, yes, but I do want to make one one point that is a key factor in doing planes and lines is um, please do be aware that the different versions of lines and planes are, have different purposes. So the other thing that you can do with vectors is construct lines and planes out of them. So when you make a line, To make a line, you need two points. In fact, you don't need two points, you need a point and a direction. Okay, so if you have a point and a direction, you can construct all the other points on the line by going, starting at P, and adding on some multiple of the coordinates of V, and that will produce all the other points on the line. Okay, so the different values of T will produce different, value, different points. So when T is zero, you just get the point P. When T is one, you get that point there. When T is, because it's P plus V, when T is two, you get P plus two V, which is there. When T is a half, you get P plus a half of V, which is halfway. When P is, T is minus one, you get P, minus, P plus minus V, which is over here. And all the values of t, as you cycle through them, produce all the points on the line. So this is a description of what the coordinates of the points on the line are. It does not technically tell you whether any point, random point that you happen to think up of your head is on the line or not. Okay, if I say, is the point q on this line, you will probably not be able to tell. But what it does do is tell you what all the points on the line are. You can keep listing p t's and you can come up with points on the line. But to construct the equation of a line, this is where you need to start. You need to have a point and a direction. Okay? If you can find a point and a direction, then you can find the equation of the line. Right. With planes, to construct the equation of a plane, the Cartesian equation of a plane, you need a point and a normal vector. The normal vector doesn't actually have to be in the plane. Um, it doesn't have to be attached to the plane. It just has to, you have, just have to know it's um, perpendicular. So to make the equation of a plane, um, what you'll do is you'll have the, the coordinates of n, maybe the coordinates of n are a, b, c. This is how I create the equation of a plane. Um, you'll go n, sorry, um, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D and then you'll sub in P to find D. That is one way to make the equation of a plane from a normal vector and a point. The other way is to go N dot unknown vector XYZ is the same as N dot P, where P is the point, and that will produce the same thing. Uh, and some people write that as n minus p, uh, sorry, n of x minus p equals zero. That's the other way of doing it. I find these are the most useful ways. So to make um, a line, you need a point and a direction. To make a plane, you also need a point and a direction, but this time the direction is a normal vector. So if you have information about points and lines, you can create the equations by getting to this spot here. So, here's the idea. If I have a line perpendicular to 
that playing with this equation through the point one zero minus six, okay, to make the to make the the description of this line, I need a point and a direction. I have a point, that's my point. All I need is a direction. Okay? However, the direction is perpendicular to that plane. And I know, working backwards, that the a vector that is normal to a plane is constructed out of the coefficients of its equation. So I know that when I make a plane, the normal vector produces the coefficients of the equation. Um, and so I know that that is a normal vector to the plane because it's constructed from the coefficients of the plane's equation. Um, and so this is the direction of the line. So the line is point plus t times direction. And that is the um, vector version of the line. Okay, so we, what we needed to do is we needed to ask ourselves, we have a point, how do we get the direction? That's okay, because I know how to get the, the perpendicular direction from the equation of a plane. So the equation of a plane through that line and that point. Okay, so to create the equation of a plane, I need a point and I need a normal vector. That's what I need. I currently have two points in the plane. This point's on the line, so it must be in the plane too. And this point's on the plane, so I've got two points in the plane. Um, but I do not have a normal vector. But I know that I can create a vector that is perpendicular to any other vectors by cross-producting them. So to create a normal vector, I need to, I could cross-product two vectors that are in the plane and that would produce a normal vector. The goal here is to get to this stage, a point and a normal vector. So I know that if I have vectors that are in the plane, I can create a vector that's perpendicular to them by cross-producting them. So if I can find vectors in the plane, then I can find the normal vector. So let's see. Um, so firstly, the vector that's on the line is on the line, so it must be in the plane as well, because the line is in the plane. Actually, I'll just draw a picture of it here. We have this point, and we have a vector, and we have another point. That's our picture here. I have a vector that's in the plane. I could create this vector, and it's also in the plane. So I can subtract the two points to produce a vector that's in the plane. Now I have two vectors in the plane. If I cross product them, I can produce another vector that is perpendicular to both. I need to do the cross product of those and that will produce a normal vector. Remember though that if you're already told the normal vector, you do not need to do this cross product. You can just use it straight up.
So 2 times 3 minus 2 times 3 is 0. Minus j. So you go plus minus plus. That bit 0. A half times 3 is 3 over 2. A half 3 times 0 is 0. Plus k times a half times 2 is 1. So I've got 0 minus 3 over 2, 1. So picking out the things next to the ij and the k will produce the vector. So this is a normal vector. So therefore, equation of the plane is 0x minus 3 on 2y plus z equals d for some d, which I have yet to determine, and I will sub in a point. Any point will do. Uh, how about 2, 1, 1? So minus 3 on 2 times 1 plus 1 should be equal to d. So d is minus a half. So therefore, is an equation of the plane. Now I do talk about this more in the other seminar, but I just thought I would point out that your goal is to get back to here. This is the information you need to find the equations of planes and lines. Um, with lines, you may have to do further work to turn it into the Cartesian version or whatever, but um, that's the starting point for finding the equation of a line. Well, thank you um, for bearing with me. Um, I uh, hope that you have a good time um, Getting at the your, I hope you have a successful time um, in your study um, before your exam. Um, and as usual, I wish you clear thinking and calm nerves and good memory.